Hidden beneath the serene landscapes of Washington State lies a ticking time bomb, the Hanford Nuclear Waste Site. Once the dark heart of America's secret nuclear program, this site produced the plutonium that fueled the devastating Nagasaki atom bomb. Today, it holds a chilling secret. 56 million gallons of toxic waste seeping into the earth, inching closer to the mighty Columbia River as the countdown begins. Can we diffuse this lethal cocktail of cancer-causing radiation and deadly chemicals before it unleashes an environmental catastrophe, poisoning our land, our water, and our very existence? Join us on a heart-pounding journey into the most contaminated place in the Western Hemisphere, where every second counts and the consequences of failure are too horrifying to imagine. In 1943, against the backdrop of World War II, the Hanford nuclear site emerged as a crucial part of the top-secret Manhattan Project. Its mission? To produce plutonium for national defense. This remote and desolate location became the birthplace of American nuclear power. With nearly two-thirds of the plutonium used in the U.S. nuclear weapons stockpile coming from Hanford, it played a vital role in shaping the outcome of the war. The materials produced here fueled the devastating atomic bombs that helped end World War II. But the story of Hanford didn't end there. The site evolved into a sprawling nuclear production complex, expanding during the Cold War era. Nine nuclear reactors and five plutonium processing complexes emerged, creating a hub of scientific innovation and technological achievement. As the United States built its vast nuclear arsenal, Hanford scientists worked tirelessly, pushing the boundaries of nuclear technology. Their efforts yielded remarkable breakthroughs that forever changed the course of history. Decades of manufacturing have etched a harrowing tale into the very fabric of this site. Within its boundaries, a staggering 53 million U.S. gallons of high-level radioactive waste reside, locked away in 177 storage tanks. But that's not all. The Hanford site also holds a staggering 25 million cubic feet of solid radioactive waste, a ticking time bomb of hazardous materials. Beneath the surface, a silent threat lurks. Areas of heavy technetium-99 and uranium-contaminated groundwater lie beneath three tank farms. These invisible toxins pose a potential risk not only to the environment, but to future generations as well. The specter of groundwater contamination looms large, a haunting reminder of the urgent need for action. But amidst this bleak landscape, a glimmer of hope emerges. On June 25, 1988, the Hanford site was designated for inclusion on the National Priorities List. Recognizing the severity of the situation, the Washington Department of Ecology, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, and the Department of Energy, DOE, joined forces. Together, they entered into a groundbreaking agreement known as the Tri-Party Agreement. The Tri-Party Agreement, signed on May 15, 1989, provided a legal framework for environmental remediation at Hanford. It marked a turning point in the battle against the legacy of nuclear waste, a commitment to restore and reclaim this scarred land for future generations. By 2014, the Hanford Nuclear Waste Site had become the epicenter of the world's largest environmental cleanup a daunting task that faced numerous challenges ranging from technical and political hurdles to regulatory and cultural interests. The cleanup effort focused on three crucial outcomes, restoring the Columbia River corridor for other uses, converting the central plateau to long-term waste treatment and storage, and preparing for the future. In 2011, the Department of Energy, the federal agency entrusted with overseeing the site, took a significant step by interim stabilizing 149 single-shell tanks. They pumped out most of the liquid waste into 28 newer double-shell tanks. However, the challenge remained as solid waste, known as salt cake and sludge, persisted within these tanks. Then, a startling revelation. The Department of Energy discovered water intrusion in at least 14 single-shell tanks, with one of them leaking a staggering 640 U.S. gallons, 2,400 liters, of radioactive material into the ground annually since 2010. The magnitude of the problem grew even larger when a double-shell tank exhibited leaks due to construction flaws and corrosion. Shockingly, 12 more double-shell tanks revealed similar construction flaws. 
The situation demanded immediate action, and the Department of Energy began rigorous monitoring of the tanks, shifting from monthly checks on single-shell tanks to a three-year inspection cycle for double-shell tanks. But these delays and setbacks weren't the only obstacles on this arduous journey towards restoration. Managing this complex cleanup effort required the oversight of regulatory agencies. The Hanford Advisory Board, led by dedicated citizens, provided recommendations from various community stakeholders, local and state governments, regional environmental organizations, business interests, and Native American tribes all had a voice in shaping the path forward. For Native Americans, the cleanup carried an added moral and religious significance with a strong focus on preserving indigenous fauna and flora. One particular treasure was the Umtantum desert buckwheat, a plant with medicinal properties that grew exclusively in the area. Native Americans held the responsibility of safeguarding this unique species, highlighting the connection between cultural heritage and environmental preservation. Folks, do you know of any place in the Western Hemisphere that is more contaminated than the Hanford Nuclear Site in Washington? Kindly share your thoughts with us in the comment section below. And if you're enjoying watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content. Now back to our restoration of the Hanford Nuclear Waste Site in Washington State. For over 20 years, the Department of Energy, DOE, has been grappling with the task of treating and disposing of radioactive and hazardous waste at the Hanford site, and the numbers involved are mind-boggling. To put things into perspective, the estimated cost of waste treatment alone is a staggering $341 billion. Yes, you heard that right. And brace yourselves, because this colossal endeavor won't see completion until the year 2084. But there's more to this story than meets the eye. Here's where things get really interesting. Despite the magnitude of this project, the Department of Energy has faced criticism for not seeking an independent review of its work. Best practices recommend external validation, yet this vital step has been overlooked. So what exactly does the DOE plan to do with the waste? Well, hold on tight because we're diving deep into the radioactive abyss. The DOE intends to separate and vitrify the most highly radioactive portion of the waste held in 177 underground tanks. This high-activity waste, representing about 72% of the estimated radioactivity, will be transformed into a solid glass-like substance. The concept of vitrification might sound straightforward, but here's the kicker. The vitrification facility, an integral part of Hanford's waste treatment and immobilization plant, faces ongoing technical challenges. Completing this ambitious project is far from a walk in the park. In a recent analysis of alternatives, the DOE evaluated 24 options for treating Hanford's high-level waste. Brace yourselves for the jaw-dropping numbers. The cost estimates for these alternatives ranged from $135 billion up to a mind-boggling $5 trillion. To make matters even more complicated, the current plan and several alternatives would require a significant increase in annual funding, potentially up to $8 billion a year for the next decade. With completion deadlines looming and the cost skyrocketing, it's clear that a crucial decision must be made. You might think that an independent review would be a no-brainer, right? Well, think again. The DOE has not committed to obtaining that independent review to validate the analysis process. Given the monumental stakes, it's vital to ensure that all viable alternatives for optimizing the tank waste treatment mission are considered. But let's not forget the sheer scale of the problem. The Hanford site houses around 54 million gallons of radioactive and hazardous waste. Before treatment can even begin, the waste needs to be separated into two streams, a high activity portion, accounting for a mere 5% of the volume, but harboring over 70% of the radioactivity, and a low activity portion, constituting 95% of the volume. To complicate matters further, the high-activity tank waste is mixed with hazardous components, and by law, it must be vitrified before land disposal. The DOE has been actively exploring alternative methods to handle this high-level waste portion. Will they discover a breakthrough or face more roadblocks along the way? 
Meanwhile, the words spoken by Brian Vance during the 2023 Waste Management Symposia sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The Department of Energy had set an ambitious goal to begin processing Hanford's low-level radioactive tank waste through its Direct Feed Low Activity Waste Program, but unforeseen challenges have thrown their plans off course. Under an agreement with Washington's Department of Ecology, the DOE was to begin treating Hanford's low-activity tank waste, immobilizing it in glass through vitrification. However, pandemic-related delays forced the department to push the deadline to August 2025. Despite this extension, the DOE had hoped to stay close to its original schedule by completing the cold commissioning of the first vitrification melter as a top priority for 2023. The DOE seemed to be making progress when they began heating the first melter in October 2022. These massive melters are designed to operate at scorching temperatures of 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit and were the key to converting the waste into glass. But as fate would have it, their journey was far from smooth. Regrettably, Tom Fletcher and his team experienced a failure in one of the components connected to the melter's startup heaters while attempting to initiate the heat-up process. This setback during the critical stage caused the Department of Energy to halt the operation indefinitely. However, their challenges did not end there. It was then that a vulnerability in the melter's dual heating system was discovered. This system, responsible for maintaining inductive heat in the melter, was now a major obstacle standing in the way of progress. We are solving this vulnerability as we speak. We will go through a methodical testing process, and in the coming weeks to months, we will have a system that we can operate and get back up and running," said Tom Fletcher. The team is on a good trajectory to deliver in 2024, said Brian Vance. December 31st, 2024 is a very good bet for beginning DFLAW operations at WTP, he added. With the sun setting and hope shining brightly, we eagerly await the day when the Hanford Nuclear Waste Site stands as a testament to human resilience and innovation. The journey continues, and the countdown to a brighter future begins. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.